Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video, we're going to be trying to fix up this Xbox One that is in quite a bad way. So this was dropped off to me earlier. I didn't buy this. This is my son's best friend. This is his Xbox, and uh, his mum dropped it round to me and basically said it's got drop damage. Looking at it, it's seriously, seriously bad. I don't know whether it fell off a windowsill outside or something. I didn't go into the details, but it doesn't look good at all. Anyway, let's see if there's any way, I don't think I will, but let's see if there's any way that we can get this working again. So let's plug it into a TV and see exactly what it's doing. Right, okay, check this out. So, that is off it. It's got a huge crack at the front here. The whole thing, this isn't gonna be fixable, is it? The whole thing is bowed. So, uh, yeah, it looks like it's been run over. Uh, and, the, well, uh, do you know what? Can I even plug anything into the back? It's all, mis uh, it's all misaligned. Let's see if I can take this out here. I might do more damage by plugging it in. There we go, that's pushed up there. Let's just plug it in, see what it's doing. It's like a seesaw. Controller looks nice. Right, here we go. Let's see if it goes up in flames. No, now let's turn it on. Okay, so it looks like it's turning on. Fan appears to be noisy. And nothing's happening on the screen. Right, I don't really want to leave it plugged in too long because the fan's making a bit of a weird noise, but you can see there's nothing happening up on screen there. It still says no signal. So I think we need to take it apart and see exactly what, what we've got going on. The very fact that the light's on now and staying on Maybe now I'm thinking it might actually possibly be fixable. Let me hold it down. There we go. Right, okay, I'm more hopeful than I was a few minutes ago. Let's take it apart and see what's going on. Now we have lots and lots of screws to undo. Check out this bow in here. Look at that. It really is bowed out quite badly, isn't it? So let me just fast forward through this bit here. I'll give a shout out to the uh, My Mate Vince Massive as well. We need Torx 10 and Torx 9. So these ones here will be 9 and the other ones I think are 10 from memory. Ah, do you know what? I went, uh, I should know better, but I used to skateboard when I was younger, as in like a, a teenager. And uh, I still have a board and I do go on it maybe every couple of years or something, not very often. But I haven't been on it in about since before lockdown and uh, me and my friends decided it'd be a good idea to have a skateboarding weekend so we went down to the south coast we went to Eastbourne and Seaford and a lovely little uh, skate park down in Seaford in fact it was my mate that designed it and built it that's what he does for a living so that's why we went there but uh, me in my wisdom got a bit cocky after being on it for about half an hour and I was trying to do this wall ride it wasn't vertical it's a little ramp that then goes up to something that's nearly vertical and I was doing it a wall ride is basically where you just uh, ride your skateboard on a wall and then back off again and uh, I was doing it with the intention of bottling it because I've never been able to do a wall ride and uh, I you know was going on it up and then on board on it a little bit and then uh, on one one of the times I jumped off knowing I wasn't gonna make it and I was just so unlucky where I jumped off the board happened to fall down right underneath my feet I was jumping off a ramp however high meter or so high straight onto the board vroom, straight like that bang straight on backside and my wrist here and now it's a lot better than it was I couldn't do that earlier in the week but uh, doing that motion with the screwdriver is still sore so you might hear some yelps and I'll be using two hands to do stuff in this video poor me get the violins out come on give me some sympathy should I get on with the My Mate Vince Massive? I think so. This month, the Massive members consist of kitdigital.com, the longest member of the Massive. 
Thank you, Mike. Uh-uh. We have seconds in command, Kip Hakes. Then we have Max Rokotansky. Having Fun Repairs. Having Fun Repairs has his own YouTube channel. So does Kip Hakes. Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. That's Todd. He also has his own YouTube channel. Will Michaelis. Chris Seal. Felipe at MrKeeps.com. Another YouTuber. King Kurd from Low Book Auto Sales. DJVG. Stuart Park. Ellis Scarbert. Pigsy. Anders from the My Mate Vince fan club over on Facebook. I believe now they're over 1,000 subscribers, so maybe go over there and give them some love. Braden Butts from Connecticut. Kenneth Blenstrop Sorensen. Simba Tinabu and Gabe McCandless. Many, many, many thanks to each and every one of you. Now let's get back to the seesaw off an Xbox and see what is wrong with it. Right, annoyingly, this screw's just spinning. Another clump of dust. There we go. I'm worried that I'm going to scrape up the board because I'm having to use so much force on these pliers. Tweezers wouldn't do it, you see, you wouldn't get the strength in them. Okay, we're free. Oh, look at that, I just found a button. Just found a little button down here. Right, we'll have to see where that's from. Maybe that's the sync button. That would be the power on button. This is the, oh, the eject button's not in use. Oh, it's gonna be the bind button. The bind, <laughs> the bind button's gone. Okay, but to be fair, we don't need the eject button, do we? So maybe we could put the eject button onto here. So obviously they just reuse the front board, which is interesting, because they could have saved a tiny bit of money by not having that component there. But I suppose the, it would cost more to have to redesign the board and then get two lots of boards made I suppose it doesn't make sense then, having to have two lots of board. Anyway, we'll worry about that later because that's a small issue. Here we go, and another thing fell out here. That's just to do with the plastic casing and stuff, that should be okay. Right, again, massive bow in that there, going right the way through the middle here. You can see it's not flat, that's why it was seesawing. Power supply hopefully is intact. Right, just to make it nicer to work on, I'm going to blow all this dust outside. Using my data vac, check this out. Ta -da! Electric duster, so rather than using the canned air, I got myself one of these. I've been told about it many times throughout the years, but recently I was told about it by Marcel, AKA Self Man, and uh, I thought, you know what? Yeah, it's bad for the environment with the canned air, and long term use, hopefully this will actually save me money. They're not cheap. Can't remember what I paid, it was like 80 or 90 pounds, something along those lines. So obviously you'd get lots of canned air from that, but it is gonna be better for the environment to use this. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna take this outside and clean it all up. We've got a little button here, and away it goes. Right, so there you go. Apologise for the rain noise. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's good. Obviously, it's hopefully lasts many many years. It looks to be well made, but it doesn't compare, in my opinion, to uh, just a canned air. I don't think it's as powerful. Now, this is the smallest nozzle there is on it. Maybe if I brought it down to straw level, you know, like the ones that you get on the uh, WD40 and also the canned air, maybe then it would sort of concentrate the blast of jet more to clear what it needs to clear. Like, for example, I know canned air probably wouldn't do this either, but you see, with this, you can see it comes straight off. 
when I just rub it with my hands, but yet this wouldn't remove it. So it doesn't substitute a cloth and elbow grease, but what it's probably good for is stuff like, you know, getting in the vents here, then somewhere that you can't normally clean, that's probably where this comes in. So, uh, well, to be fair, you're not gonna use canned air on something like this anyway, because you would be using uh, just a, a cloth. Anyway, let's uh, look at the board and see what damage is done. And now I need to take off this little X clamp, don't I? Ah, look at that. The little clamp thing fell off there, but that's okay, because we can just screw that back in. Now, one second, let's get this out of the way. I'll tell you what, let's put this on here. Well, I think the fan itself is probably going to be okay. Now, this is what I'm worried about. The bow on the board. Where is the bow coming from? Here. That's good. That's good because the bow's not coming from the middle of the main chip here or this chip here. Has it missed the RAM chips? Maybe. Do you know what? You couldn't wish for a bow to be in a better place because look, capacitors doesn't matter. This thing here doesn't matter because it's got legs. I can't see any BGAs on this ball grid array chips, chips with balls underneath it on this area here. Do you know what? It might be okay. Is it just a HDMI issue? Imagine if it was. Well, we've got more to do obviously, like for example, the little sync button and stuff and we need to straighten it all up. But imagine if we could get this working again. Nothing I can do about all the cracks everywhere in the casing. But uh, you know, that doesn't affect gameplay, does it? Oh, also this USB port down here needs work, yeah. But maybe I can just straighten that up. It's amazing how it looks like a HDMI port. Right, let's have a look in here, see what's going on with this uh, HDMI port. Let me get my microscope out, let's zoom in, see what's happening. Right now, this is the HDMI port. As you can see, it's all bashed up. Looks to be the original one because this uh, company here make good stuff. Now, are the pins okay? Well, amazingly, the pins are okay. So is it just the fact that it's all been misshapen? Now, do you know, Beforehand, I would have probably just tried to rebend this back into place because maybe it's not making a, a good contact. But I think maybe what we should do is, I did ask the mum and this port here is not used. So this is HDMI in, you know, if you want to connect something else to your Xbox. But for example, now on the recent Xboxes, they've got away with, uh, they've done away with these now. So what I might try to do is I might try to replace the ports, put this port here and put this port over here and then uh, you know try to bend this back into place and stuff. I'm not even going to test it at the end because we don't HDMI in is not going to be used. Either that or I could see I don't think I've got any spares you see and it means I'd have to order them up and I've got a feeling they probably want this fixed ASAP. I think I'm just going to swap them over because this is not going to be used. The Xbox itself is really ruined now anyway. You know what I mean? If they ever wanted resale value, then uh, you know the case and everything is cracked. It's just, you know, can we get it working rather than trying to make it immaculate? To make it immaculate, we're gonna have to redo all the case, uh, top bit, bottom bit, metal bit inside, you know, that's uh, a lot of work. And if you have to buy that, it's gonna be quite expensive, isn't it? Yeah. Let's try to change that port out. I think I could probably bend this back into place and it may work. But in doing that, I might end up damaging the pins. I don't know what to uh, I don't know what to do here. Do you know what? I think I'm gonna take it off. And if it comes off easy, I think I'm gonna take off that and swap them. Then when this is off, I might be able to bend it back into place. Because by bending it back into place here now, I might end up damaging it. So yeah, it's not making that, it's not making a good contact. It could be as simple as just squeezing it up here and then it might make it uh, sit nicely around the pins. I'm just worried that it's just so out of place. You can see it's not in line with that at all. Let's put some low melt solder on it. Let's see if we can take it off. Right, so I'm gonna be using some of this stuff.
So I'm just going to add some flux around here and I've got my iron set to 480 degrees Celsius. No way, haha, <laughs> wow. Well, I wasn't expecting that. There we go. So now, hopefully I haven't done major damage to the plastic on that. Let's clean this up using some solder wick. Can't believe that. Maybe it's because I've got a brand new soldering iron. Look at it. Da -da 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 -da. Yes, I've leveled up. I've got a Heiko FM2028 and check out that little bent tip that I bought for it. I just have to remember now to try to keep it in good condition. And that isn't out, that is not the only thing I've bought. I have also bought, do you know what? I've been wary about doing this for a long time because I feel now that uh, no longer am I the common man if I've got expensive equipment. But at the same time, I have been struggling on with my previous equipment for a long time and everybody's been telling me to upgrade for ages. So I've also bought myself a quick 861, but I got the DE one because uh, the other one was out of stock and they offered me this one for the same price. It's just ever so slightly more powerful. So a quick 861 DE. So it'll be interesting to use that as well. So I presume to begin with, I'll be burning everything, but hopefully after a while, I'll get used to it. And I've got myself a microscope that can record. I've really, really, be really, really gone for it.
Well, there we go. I've been really lucky with that there. You can see zero damage has been done to the board. Now, I wish I did just have an Xbox port to pop in because it would be a lot easier than trying to take out this one and then clean it up and put it back in. But I kind of want to get this done. And now uh, it's a Sunday today. So the earliest anything would be arriving would be uh, probably realistically Wednesday-ish. So uh, yeah, I'd rather, rather get it done now. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is the same process again. I'm going to just put low melt solder around this port here and then I'm going to clean up the port when it's off and drop it onto here. So uh, yeah, really now just kick back, listen to some music. This is going to take quite some time and uh, you've seen me take off this port. Obviously if anything goes wrong, I will just start filming again in real time and you can see the disaster unfolding. But hopefully it's going to come off okay. So I'll get to the music in just a minute. I just want to make clear the reason I'm using low melt solder. If I had a port, then I wouldn't be using low melt solder because I would just use hot air, burn the hell out of the port. It doesn't matter because it's going to go in the bin anyway. And then you would put the new port on with solder nine and it would all be fine. But because I'm having to reuse the ports there, I'm swapping them over. I can't risk using the hot air on it because it's just going to melt. Now, it might not melt enough to actually affect the performance of it, but you are going to get a little bit of melting and there's going to be a kind of fine line between ruining it and getting away with it. So I don't think it's worth the risk. Yes, it takes longer with the low melt solder, but it's kind of guaranteed you're not going to damage the ports. I find it actually quite satisfying, if I'm honest with you, because it's kind of like, oh, it's given a bit. And I just like the fact that it takes so long to solidify. You know, it really is a workable product. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of amazed that the HMI port would actually come out on a board this thick with just low melt solder. So, yeah, very happy. OK, well, music time. So what you're going to see now is me remove the good port and then I need to put the bad port where the good port was on the HDMI in and then I'm going to put the good port where the bad port was on the HDMI out. Vitamins and history books Psychology and a different way to look at it all Cause my perspective is broken If suffering's a way to earn your keep I better start Putting miles on my feet But I'm so tired of wandering Myself in words. 
Looking at these Forgiving myself I know I'm claustrophobic Comfortable Looking at these Forgiving myself And what I know Okay, so you've seen the two ports come off. You've seen one port go back on, the good port. The other port, the damaged one, I've put back on. It doesn't go on as nice because the pins are not lying very flat, but it's on. I've done the tweezer test by nudging each of the pins, and I've done the continuity test using my little breakout adapter, and that's all testing fine. So now we're going to move on to the USB port and also the little bind, the sync button. Right, so the solder connections look okay here. The middle part I think might be okay. It's just the, the casing around the outside. So let's see if we can reform it into a rectangle again. Now this port is kind of useful for charging your controller, if depending on the controller you have and also for like syncing up if you didn't want to use the uh, sync button. The bind button, you know, to connect up your controller. Basically, we've got two more ports around the back. So again, it's not the end of the world if that doesn't work, but it's a lot easier depending on where your Xbox is to access the ports out the front or the port out the front. I think maybe with this it'd be easy if I got a USB port, put it in and try to form it around the port. Well, I think that might do. Remember, we still don't know if the Xbox is gonna work. Right, uh, I think now that I've got the soldering iron and everything on, I think let's see if we can fix up the little bind button. Let's zoom in and see what's going on with it. So this has come off here. Let's just give that a little clean up to begin with. Might be able to put the original button back on. We'll have a look at it closely. Right, luckily there's no damage there at all, is there? Okay, let's have a look at the original button. Well, originally when I was filming this, I did think about repairing this, but it's pointless because it's already got one of the legs missing on the bottom left and the two legs on the right hand side are all crooked. You would be able to get it to work, but it's kind of pointless because we have an empty eject button, which isn't doing anything because this is an Xbox One all digital. It hasn't got a disk drive. It doesn't need the eject button. So in this part of the video, you see me taking off the eject button and then I need to put it to where the bind button is because the buttons themselves are exactly the same. Right, I think I could probably get away with that, but because it is a button that does actually get used and we know 100% that this eject button doesn't get used because it's a digital version, why don't we add some low melt solder to that and see if we can remove it.
There we go, it's getting loose. There we go. I'm just going to clean that up. Right, so that's the button that's come off. You can see that that is intact. So uh, I'm not bothered about this little bridge between here and here. That will go when I when I solder it. So now let's go on to here. I think I'm going to tin up the pads. I'm going to leave the tiny bit of low melt solder on the other one because there's only a little dribble on it anyway. Possibly small button on here. I can't see if that's done it or not because of the uh, the glare from all the flux. Let's clean it and see what it looks like. It still clicks nicely. Let's see here. They're not shortened against each other, I don't think. Bit of meltage to the plastic, but uh, should be okay. And this side. Yeah, that's okay, isn't it? That's not shorting. But let's just double check. No, that's just still flux, I need to give it another clean. Let's now just double check for uh, continuity. Right, so that's going to be the ground, so now we shouldn't have anything between here and here, or here and here. And we haven't. Now, let me give it a little click if I can. That's that one. Keep slipping off, I can't do my tune. Ah, I can't do it. Anyway, it works. Right, so now let's put it roughly back together. 
connected to the TV to see now if we do have a display or whether all of this has been just a big waste of time. Okay, here goes. I am on the correct, let me just double check. HMI one, yes. Now, is this button even gonna work? Yes, it is. Is it gonna do anything? Oh, no signal, come on, disappear. Oh, come on. Oh, it's not disappearing. I wonder, is it a hard drive related? I mean, you can see the damage on it. I think it's, I can't hear. I can't hear it clicking. You know, normally if I heard that clicking, I would, uh, I would say it's hard drive related. I don't think I can hear that click. Uh, let's try unplugging that, plugging it back in again. No. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, right, okay. How about if I turn... Oh, it just turned off. Hmm, right, okay. It just turned itself off. How about if I try to start it in safe mode? So... I thought normally you have to do eject and bind, but I presume because it's all digital, maybe you just have to do uh, eject and, uh, sorry, bind and power. So holding down the button that I replaced, this is so awkward because it's uh, not in very well. I'm holding down the bind button. I might have to Google how you get the all digital into safe mode. Right, nothing's happening there, is it? Do you reckon it's hard drive related? I think it might well be. Right, I'm just going to leave that, see if it disconnects again, if it turns off again. And I'm just going to read up how to get the all digital into safe mode. Right, it's turned itself off again, hasn't it? Right, just says to hold down the sync button until you hear the second start up yeah, yeah, tone, but I didn't hear, I didn't hear that. Uh, let's try and disconnect the hard drive. Now, would it do anything, I wonder, if I turn it on without that? Would it just behave the same? So as if it behaves the same, it suggests that the hard drive is faulty because it's not, not going to do anything different whether or not it's connected. I think what I'm going to do is... These are one terabyte ones, aren't they? I've only got 500 gigabytes, but I did put a one terabyte one, I'm pretty sure, into an Xbox ages ago, the original Xbox. I might try to take that one out and uh, pop it in here see if it starts working the HMI port didn't look good did it I'm just wondering is it worth well I suppose it's still worth fixing it if it's the hard drive but I could change the hard drive out it might be something else I just want to see if it turns itself off again when the hard drive's not in it I'm just going to see if the bind button works no it doesn't but is that because it's not rec no, it's gone off again. Is that because it's not recognising it because the software is not on here? Hopefully, if we get it working, maybe the bind button will work. Right, okay, I'm going to get another hard drive. I think this is hard drive related. Okay, so I've taken out the original one terabyte hard drive. I haven't got a one terabyte drive to replace it with, but I've got a 500 gigabyte one from the original Xbox. Let's see now if that's going to actually work or not. I've left it with the same cables and everything in just for time being, just for testing. Let's see if it recognises this. Uh, 
Uh, do you see there it did a double spin? Now, is it going to come up? Oh, I haven't got the cable in. One second, sorry. Did a double spin there, which was different than before. Here we go. Yes, fantastic. Right, so, hard drive problem. Okay, what I'm going to do is... Get, the, this, get this out of the caddy, and uh, then, yeah, put this one in here. Obviously, if it's not working, it means then that the cables here are faulty, but they all look absolutely perfect. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a boring one, if I'm honest with you. But I'll tell you what, let's see, does the sync button now work? Yeah, look, can you see it's blinking? No, you can't, can you? Sorry. There you go. Right, well, at least that button's fixed. And uh, let's see now the USB, is that going to work? Because I connected up this controller to the other Xboxes when I was testing to see which, uh, which one I could take the drive from. Let's see now, I won't use the sync button. Let's see if it will work just by plugging it into the USB and that will tell us if the USB is working, won't it? Oh, it vibrated, whoa! It vibrated and yeah, there we go. Will it keep its sync? Yes, it will. Okay, so I'm just cleaning off the rock hard thermal paste. Especially up here, it's like, uh, it's gone really, really hard. So that's gonna take some scrubbing. I've put the good hard drive now, taken the faulty one out, I've labeled that as faulty. I've taken the good, one, uh, the good one now and I've put it into the caddy that belongs to the all digital version. And uh, what else have I done? I've bent this into place, this is looking quite nice now. But I still need to bend the top cover into place and also the little bit that goes across here. The plastic will remain cracked. There's nothing I can do about that. I might put a little bit of super glue on it, but it's not going to wear. It's not going to look good and it's not going to last. Uh, what else? All I have to do now is because the this is already out of an Xbox One, it should have all the partitions in. So all I have to do is get the operating system onto the USB stick. And then when I turn it on, do the uh, safe mode thing, put the USB stick in, and then hopefully it should boot from there. Yes, they're gonna have to sign in and download all their games again, but that's the problem. When a hard drive goes, what can you do? It's a pain, it's a shame these can't be repaired. Yes, I could take it apart, and it might be just that the platter's stuck, but the problem is as soon as you take them apart, then you introduce dust into it, no matter how careful you are, unless you've got a specialist room to do it in, and uh, it's just gonna fail again, so it's not a repairable device for the average person at home. Well, not even the average person at home. For even professionals, it's not a repairable device unless you repair hard drives for a living. But even then, you don't repair them, you just get the data off them. So in this instance here, nobody would be repairing one of these for the Xbox. So uh, yeah, that is it. Next time you see this, it will be back together. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be working. Right, so here we have it. It's all set up as a new Xbox and it needs the Microsoft account setting up. If I was to go into it here, you can see it moves around down here. So I let them set it up from new and then they can download the games that they had on it before from the Microsoft store. So uh, how's it working? Yeah, it's working okay. It's the fans a bit noisy. It's definitely not as good as it was when it left the factory originally. It's got plenty of battle scars and stuff like that. But sync button is now working and the fact is the Xbox is now working. It's never going to be as good as it was. How long it's going to last for, I don't know. It looks like it's been thrown at a great height with some force. So we're all dropped from a great height with some force. So uh, yeah, I've uh, done my best on it. I didn't have a one terabyte hard drive to replace. I've only replaced it with half that 500 gigabytes. But I'm not charging for this repair. If they're concerned about having half the storage, then they can just buy themselves an external drive and plug it into the back. And then they can have one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, whatever they want plugged into the back there. So uh, yeah, considering it was in bits and not working, at least it's working now. So the things that were wrong with it was the hard drive's completely gone and also the sync button had fallen off. Both those things have now been changed. The HDMI port at the back, I don't actually know if it was faulty, it was damaged. Whether it was actually going to work or not, I don't know, but it was definitely crooked and damaged, so it's going to be better now than it was before. So I think, uh, I think overall, a success. Far from perfect, but it's a workable Xbox, and who knows, it might carry on working for a long time yet, which would be nice. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up. I've got plenty of variety coming up on the channel uh, going forward. So uh, yeah, if you haven't already, think about subscribing, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.